So it's carrie.keniston at gmail. That's C A R I. Is it one or two N's? K E N I S T O N? Boom. I I'm so smart. It's ridiculous. So carrie.keniston at gmail. I'll, I'll post about it later again so y'all can see. Yeah, please. Yeah, that'll be good. Okay, Jess, I'm almost ready. What's up? Who's that? Joey and... Matt's going to be beefing with me in a minute. I can't read. I can't see from this far away for some reason. My screen's all foggy. It's kind of foggy, right? Look how clear yours is. Yeah, yours is kind of foggy. Mine's dingy. All right. Okay. Do I have to address anything? Can you push that back for me, Frankie? Oh, you Push it further back. Oh, yeah. Here, tell me when it's in the right view. Am I okay where I am? Tell me when. Keep going. Keep going. That's good. You're good here? Yep. Okay. Right. Ah. Backstage beyond the laughs. Backstage beyond the laughs. Backstage beyond the laughs. Backstage, be on the last. Check, check. Microphone, check. One, two. What is this? The, okay. You gotta. Can you? You gotta. Can, no, that. What? This way. <clears throat> that way so I can get her. Yeah. Can Can you actually go scoot over a little bit? Cause I can't get you. But I can't get her in mine either. Who is that? There you go. Boom. Oh. What? Okay. Hold you on. Got it. You got it. There you go. All right. There. So here's what I'm gonna pray and hope and make sure of that yeah. this thing. I think all three are good now, right? I gotta put this on silent. I should do that as well. All right, all three. Oh, all three are good. Boom! Yeah, there we go. Oh, now everybody's so in. Everybody's. You are now live. <laughs> it's like, pole is definitely in the way. I'm still not on Nikki's, but just my nails are. That's all, that's all good. Catwoman, you weren't on there last week either. Yeah, I was last. Oh, yeah, exactly. You've been slowly edging me out. I get it. That's what's up. Yeah. That is one thing. Well, I'm on mine. That's what matters. Just I'm ready in one second. I'm sorry. I don't know what's happening right now. Oh my God. Shut up, Frankie. This is ridiculous. Frankie, help me. What's happening? I don't know. What is happening? I have no idea. What are you trying to do? Live. What are you just stop? Oh, stop. Right oh my god. Go okay, away. Got it. Let I me see, see this. See you don't it. know things. <laughs> <laughs> hey y'all. I hate millennials and I love them at the same time. So that means I love and hate you. I, lo I love how you just cut me out of everything. That, oh, I can't, his name is, I can't say it because I'm on live. I'll tell you after. Who was this? Huh? Yeah, it's just a preference thing to like have an ear free. In case you, you need to stop for an ambulance. You never know. You never you know, know that. what you... That's to keep so she can hear the voices inside her head. I have to be able to hear the voices inside of my head. I'm a writer. All right. Speak to me. We're ready. ready. Come in, Jess. This is going to be more deal. Welcome to Backstage Beyond the Laughs. I'm your host, Nikki Moore, and we are finally here and ready to get this shit entertainers, comedians, and today we're going backstage with an author who's not a comedian, but we will touch on comedic stuff. Um, Nikki completely forgot to say that Frankie French, her co-host, is also here. I actually hadn't got to that yet. <laughs> Oh, okay, 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 okay. Sorry. Hi, sorry. So one. that's my rude, impatient, <laughs> and un- 
confident co-host <laughs> who has zero faith in me. I know, super confident. Okay, <laughs> not in me. Oh, I am confident in you. I love you so much. Okay, okay. anyway, that's Frankie French, and hey. I'm Nikki Moore, and we are going Backstage, together. Backstage, beyond the laughs. <laughs> there, I said it first. We do this all the time. <laughs> I'd like to welcome to the show um, one of my favorite people. My She's pretty favorite, amazing. Favorite oh, people in, in, in life. And she is an author. She has written over 40 books. I know. I thought it was 50. She has published close over to 50. 40. Yeah, close, close to 50. 50. Closer books. to 50 than 40. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. 40 ish. No, close. 47. Boom. Okay. Yeah. To be. And the top 10, we wanted to list. We wanted to list them, but I don't know what happened. I didn't get the so, <laughs> info in time. So here's what I'd like for you to do after I say, welcome to the show, author India Ray. Thank hey. you. Hi. Thank Hi. you for having me. You're um, also one of my favorite humans. Uh, I don't know if you know that. Thank I'm so you. impressed with you. She's so magical. She's something like a fairy. <laughs> I know, a little bit, yeah. Thank you. Hey, fairy. Um, hey. Uh, so... Top 10 books. Top 10 books. Um, The biggest. Just give me title. Sure. So I should say, let me say this. I should say that India Ray has authored over 47, well, 47 novels um, about, sit this in front of it, about uh, their ratchet novels. They're ratchet urban fiction. Urban fiction novels. No, in front, in front, so it doesn't slide. Come to me. Yes. So anyway, they're urban fiction novels, and they cover the gambit. So why don't we start with? Okay, I, let me preface this by saying there's no cursing. <laughs> I. So that's even, probably more of a struggle for you than it is me. Church. Well, thank you. Sure. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, India. For, and, and the doors yeah, of the church you. are open. Okay. <laughs> Um, the book titles are very interesting and provocative. So I want you to go from the top down, starting from the highest rate rated to the least rated top 10, uh, novels um, by title. Sure. In 30 seconds. Ratchet Wives Club, uh, The Thought Next Door, Ashes to Ashes, Dust to Side Chicks, The Side Next door. Um, uh, God, there's another Ratchet Wives series of eight Atlanta Crazy Baby Daddy Chronicles. Ooh. A Trap God Chose Me. Where are we? A Trap God Chose Me. <laughs> Go ahead. I ain't going to take up your time. Two more. Then we get a little, you know, host by the fireman. That was that was a, a okay. period of erotica I was going through. Um, I'm trying to think. Because these are there's a multi-book more. series. Take your time. Do yeah, it. Just one got, more. Um, no, two more. Oh, okay. Two more, your granddaddy, my sugar daddy. Hilarious. That's okay. That's hilarious. And then we also have your pastor, my sugar daddy. Yo, oh, granddaddy, no. my sugar daddy. Is your granddaddy my pastor? <laughs> no, it's two different. Two different. Yeah, could be. Listen, I was completely taken, uh, uh, not a bath, but just taken by some of these titles. And the thought next door, you know, was one of my favorites. <laughs> And the side I got next a, door yeah. was another. They were fun so, to write. They were? Right, yeah. So let's get into it. How in the universe did you <laughs> twinkle into the world of book writing? Um, I've always been a writer. Um, I've always written short stories and written poetry and it kind of happened out of a necessity to never work a job again. And um, to be in a creative space, I have adult ADD. It's a real thing. And I'm not one of those people who are like, oh, I'm so ADD. No, it's clinical. And I've been fired from jobs. Quit them because, you know, the brain doesn't operate on nine to five time. Right. Um, so it just came out of a necessity to feed myself and utilize the things that I am talented um, and and that was I have a wild imagination you do. and you do. I can be compulsive so it's I can sit at a computer screen and express the imagination for hours and I, I couldn't do that in any other field so mm -hmm. that's how I blew no I should I should say did you have something before I say no no go ahead okay on. I should say that I've known uh, India Ray since she was two years old I I didn't know that yeah two years that's old that's crazy and I have born witness to 
the creative brain that mm-hmm. she labeled as AD, ADD. Not AD&D. <laughs> ADD. 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 I got the same thing. Got a <laughs> special cell phone. This is part of the reason I'm so fond of the fairy. So she's magical in addition to being Agreed. creative. Now, how long have you been writing? I think as early as seven, uh, there are stories of me writing short stories and, and poetry. And um, I took my first creative writing class probably around seven or eight. So before you started writing, what were you doing? Um, Let's talk about some of the jobs you got fired from. But tell me what you were doing before you started writing and then talk about some of the jobs. Before I started writing professionally or for fun? For money. For money. Um, God, I've done everything. I've worked in property management. Mm-hmm. I um, I worked in the nonprofit world for a while in different organizations. Um, I worked for a uh, medical nursing company situation. I worked in digital marketing. That was the last job that I was fired from. <laughs> Glorious day. It was the best day of my life. Why? Um, I, you know, I, they pulled me in. It was a Friday afternoon around 3 o'clock. I'll never forget. It was the Friday before Thanksgiving, too. Like, the next week was Thanksgiving. And they're like, they're really heartbroken about it because they liked me. And I wasn't fired because of something I had done, but it just wasn't a good fit. And so they're firing me and I'm containing the joy. I'm like, I've been wanting to get fired. <laughs> and I was con- contemplating quitting. But, you know, you get fired, you collect unemployment. So, um, they, uh, they pull me in and they're like, we're really sorry. And we just thought that this is going to work out. And I'm like... <laughs> they probably told you was get ready to be a, a, a homicidal maniac. Oh, no, man. I left. I went to happy hour. And so why were you so celebrated. happy to lose the job? Because at that point, uh-huh. I had um, written a series, which is not under my pen name, India Ray, but it was a romance um, novel. I written what was a the series, name of it? Dance For You. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's still on sale on Amazon under July night. So I had written Dance For You. I had just completed the series. Part three, it came out, and it had made more money than I was making at the job. Oh, wow. Um, but Amazon pays you late, so I wasn't going to see that check for another 60 days. Mm-hmm. But I was just like, listen, if I was able to do this part-time, right, I can do it then what can I do You know, if I had right. all my time? So I was just like, that's okay. I got a hit series right now. Bye. <laughs> and, Hilarious. And I love that. I took the next week off and then got to work after Thanksgiving. I love that. Congratulations. That's Thank amazing. You. Thank that you. That is amazing. So let's talk about the fact that you've been an artist since a little girl. Yes. One of the funniest and, and most endearing stories that I have about India Ray is that when she was two, three years old, three years old, the movie E.T. was out. Mm-hmm. It was new. <laughs> and like every other black child, she was raised by the TV. Okay? The TV was the babysitter some days. No dig, mommy. <laughs> I'm just saying. Like, we be busy. <laughs> we ain't got time to do all that stuff. If you color in your coloring book and you attentive to the TV, that becomes the babysitter because I ain't got no money to pay nobody. I realize. So, she had watched E.T. Okay. And this is when her mother and I, who's my best friend, knew that she was a creative. Mm -hmm. This little girl went missing in the apartment. (laughs) Now, she lived in this basement apartment, and I lived on the third floor in the same building. I was the manager of the building. And her mother and I were best friends, so we did just like every day, most most things together. So this particular day was no unusual day. It was like every other day. So we knew that she was too small to just kind of navigate the door because it was like one of those low-income buildings, and the door was heavy. (laughs) It was metal, okay? So she couldn't have got out the house, and she was gone. So the mother's running through everywhere, Sheree, Sheree. That's her real name, Sheree. And I'm like, oh, my God, I don't know where she is. So we're looking through, so her mother breaks out in tears. We had gone into every crevice of that little apartment at least 16 times, okay? And all of a sudden, I heard this chuckle. <laughs> Like in the background. Was she hiding among the stuffed animals? She was hiding among the stuffed yeah. animals. That scene in E.T. I, I was so. So you were you were watching them run frantically. Yeah, I remember this. 
That's so I remember funny. That story. I was so enamored by the fact that she was that smart. Yeah, that's I so funny. I couldn't do anything but I'm more, to celebrate. I'm more enamored at the fact that you're that dumb. That's so <laughs> not only that dumb, her mother was devastated and she's laughing. I'm like, so she is creative and crazy. Okay. <laughs> Okay. You better watch this baby. Even she's gonna be a serial killer or an artist. Okay? Right, right. We, we're gonna oh. lean toward artists. <laughs> or a Listen, writer about her. I thought that was the most brilliant thing. That is one of those life's moments that has stuck with me for all of these years. You're now what? Thirty-two. Yeah. And I just thought that that was the funniest thing and and glorious. So, in one of the also transitions. As in property management, I I was in property management before I got into oh, entertainment. This this child, I hired her. <laughs> oh come on, call it. Okay, uh, she I didn't fire her, although I thought I was gonna have to because I, I, I knew she it. hated it, and I you know you just know, and she knew she hated it, but we she needed the money, so she showed up. But one day <laughs> after she left. She she gave her notice, and she left. One of her coworkers was like this crazy old chick, right? <laughs> and the crazy old chick would just like snoop around, you know, that office yeah. person. Yeah, it was I about nine people that in the office. Person. This chick would snoop around and mind everybody's business and go in. So this this chick came into my office that evening. She's gone home. She said, Monique, look what I and she raised trash can. First of all, crazy old lady. Why are you in anybody's trash can, creep show? Why are Why? you digging through the trash can? Yeah. Ew. She had thrown away all the bills. Part of her job was to pay the bills. <laughs> she, she, she must have like got just like, this is stupid. I just can't. And threw That's all the bills away. Hilarious. I'm like, oh my God, how long have you been? <laughs> It was the funniest, is, craziest thing. So the so next funny. day you came and gave your notice. She didn't even, I didn't have to fire her. She just came and gave her notice. I was like, oh. So wait a minute. How <laughs> long were you had the I don't remember. Oh, Lord. And I'm really embarrassed stuff. about it. So I try not, because it was one of those ADD downward Listen, spiral. You know what? I get it. I, 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 I get it. So, That's hilarious. I get it. Just cannot. Like, look, I can't with these people's bills. <laughs> I I, this is not own. a good day. I'm throwing these bills in the trash. That this is part so... of my work is done for the day. So, Andy, I wanna, I wanna ask you. I went this past week and I was at the Black Women in Comedy Festival, and one of my biggest takeaways is that um, it was just a great experience to be around so many talented, mm -hmm. smart Black women. You know, I mean, it was a very incredible experience. So do you, is, is that something being around or engaging with that group and, you know, is that important to you and, and what kind of message do you want to give to your audience? Um, so the first part, like writing is very isolating, which it's on one hand, I need to, I need silence to get things done. But mm -hmm. on the other hand, I, I'm, I'm like an introvert that has extroverted tendencies and I need people. Um, and co-workers so after like four years of doing this I'm like I need people but I don't I only have Nikki right now <laughs> and um, and that's like six people oh my that god is. times 12 go ahead so <laughs> yeah I the all of the other writers I know they're spread out across the country and so we kind of check in from time to time and encourage one another but um Sometimes I do need someone like there because I'm a bit competitive too. So, you know, me and my writing partner in Chicago will hit each other up and like, listen, let's sprint for an hour and let's come back and see who has the most words. So that that helps. I like mm -hmm. I like I need a little bit of competition. The second part of your question. Um, what's the second? It's about um, en engaging. What's your kind of your goal when you engage with your audience? What do you want to give them and impart upon them? My goal is. To first, when it comes to fiction, because I also write poetry and then uh -huh. I also teach yoga, but with fiction, I want to entertain people. I want them to have a moment and a break away from the drama in their lives. And if there is no drama, give them some drama to you know mm -hmm. engage in and um, give them another world to escape to. So that's my goal um, is to entertain women. Really, I don't men don't read my books, <laughs> but um, well, not all men read your books. 
<laughs> ultimately, yeah, it's the goal is to really just entertain yeah. people and give someone give them the give them give them an escape. And so when I get messages like people commenting about, especially some of the boyfriends or husbands that I write about, they're like, "Wait, do these people exist?" And right. Like, I don't know. If it's in my mind, maybe. Right. Oh, it's in motivation in the array. <laughs> nice. I like that. So tell me, what, what has been your most difficult project to date? Right now, I'm writing part three of Ratchet Wives Club Atlanta, and it's just the longest time it's taken me to uh, release a sequel. Uh, How many pages are your stories? I kind of work in word counts, so it depends. Any the shortest books are like forty thousand words. The longest are like eighty thousand. Okay. Um, and so I've, I'm shifting from doing series because I think the readers really want a complete story now. So I'm shifting from series to standalones. And the Ratchet Wives uh, Club of Atlanta is like the hardest thing I've ever written because I didn't outline the story. And um, I'm writing, like, it's coming up with it. But I'm, I go by outlines. I'm able to t- turn out ideas much more quickly when I have, like, mm-hmm. a roadmap. So. When you're, so when you're writing, like, The Housewives, what is it? What's the name of it again? Sorry. Ratchet Wives. Ratchet Wives of Atlanta. Club. Wives Club of, of Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Did you go spend time in Atlanta? I have, to yes. get? Oh, okay. Yes, okay. Yes. But did you go specifically for research? Or, was, or did you just draw from, hey, I was in Atlanta, X, Y, Z? Both. And, oh, both. Okay. Yeah, both. What's your research process like? Um, I like to go to different uh, neighborhoods, sit down and write, spend time in the neighborhoods. I, that's what I did in L.A. Uh, back mm-hmm. in January. I have some story ideas centered around L.A. that will be coming out later in the year. Um, it's basically just getting a feel, um, you know, going to bars and chatting up people with, mm. with uh, the, the, the um, craziness will allow me to. I'm trying to say... Um, <laughs> Creative brain. Yeah, there you go. The creative brain will allow you to. But yeah, so that's the the research process involves a lot of Googling. So Mm -hmm. my Google searches are insane uh, from, you know, how much Coke calls to, you know, how to dispose of a body to like everything. I I would love to go through your Google history. it's, It's like. I always tell people, like, you can't judge. Not how much Coke costs, though. That's Is so that a funny. Googleable uh, Oh, thing? you can Google yeah. everything. There's wow. nothing you can't Google. Yeah, that's true. I mean, and that's the, that's not even, there's dark, there's crazier things that I've Googled. Let me just say, we have a very interesting relationship from, you know, the time that she was a two-year-old child. She was, like, my favorite person. But, you know, well, three. I should say at three. Because I don't think I liked you very much or any other child at five. But at three... Oh, and great. every other age, she's <laughs> been amazing. And now we're very close. We spend a lot of time together because we're we're a lot alike with the creative brain and all of that stuff and the the independence. And mm-hmm. So like she's my favorite millennial, mm-hmm. and I guess I'm your favorite Gen Xer. Geriatric? What did you say? (laughs) (laughs) Well, we spent a lot of time. And let me tell you, so most recently, I noticed a thing that is just so contrary to what we do with my generation. We're looking for somewhere to eat, and we go up to a place, and she's like, I want to look and see what's behind the wooden door. I'm like, girl, that's a bookstore. Come on, let's go to this restaurant. She's like, no. I I feel like there's something that, yeah. So she gets to the wooden door. It says a restaurant. It's, it says a name. It's actually a D.C. restaurant. And my new fave, it's Oku, D.C. Okay. We go in. We go to the door. She's standing at the door. I said, well, what are you doing? Googling about I'm this. Googling yeah. the restaurant. Yeah. I said, millennial, we're right here. <laughs> you got to check them reviews. Open you the gotta door. Exactly. You got to yeah, go you gotta down. Check you got to see if somebody right. done found a roach in there. Sushi. Right. Yeah. Well, you got to you gotta vet the place before. You don't want to walk in. No. Nah. And then find That's why I love you, millennials. <laughs> we do. We I investigate. Do. Yeah, you got to investigate. We are investigators. We're master investigators. We're, we don't have the money worst is when you ra- waste. Yeah, when you rabbit hole. Ooh. Oh, what I'm a, that? You- so like I Google this restaurant and I start looking and looking and then I find out that Eminem went there back mm-hmm. in, in 2015. So then I click on Eminem and then I find out, oh, well, he's in a rap battle with Machine Gun Kelly. So I click on oh, Machine so Gun you Kelly. Are- yes, that's- and then I find out Machine Gun Kelly's dating Paris Hilton. So I click on Paris Hilton. So that's called then rabbit I, hole. That's rabbit oh, hole. So you, you just, just click. You just, you, just you just start digging. And, dig, and the next thing I know, I'm looking up how to make scrambled eggs. 
off the back seat of listen, my car if it's really hot. Listen, 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 for at least like an hour or two of my day, that's I'm in a rabbit hole. Yes. I don't watch TV. I fall down holes. Oh, yes. I, I fall there's... down Google rabbit holes. Mm-hmm. And before you know it, I'm well versed in like, yeah, I know so. all about Bacos, uh, uh, the, the primates. I know all yes. about, so, I know yeah. the random Bonobos. I know like, yeah. that they're, 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 they're the monk, they're the, um, they're called the Barnabas? Bonobos. Bonobos. Yeah, I know all about them. Because of a rabbit hole. Yeah, because yeah. of a rabbit hole. Totally like I know, know, I know that they're like a matriarchal society. They that's they really find food. They have sex to celebrate it. Um, I know that they beat up men when like if a male bonobos gets out of hand, they like gang up on him. With I the know, women. Yes. Yeah. So you're, so basically you're describing that trick. <laughs> you're, just, that trick. you're describing the direction of that our society is moving into. <laughs> Got it. Bonobos. Is it bonobos? Bonobos. But that's that's but from that's, yeah hole. that's what happens is stuff like that mm-hmm. you know like you find out koala bears have gone, um, gonorrhea when you start just digging right through. I did hear that yeah I thought it was chlamydia 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 yeah. sorry that's yeah. right yeah. either way yeah they all have it, it yeah. they all have it well, how do they they're all so have cute. it because well, they're so disgusting I was gonna say, okay right. they're born with chlamydia yeah. yeah. Or yeah, yeah. They well, out of getting it like out of some incestuous koala thing <laughs> that happens. Oh, I'm pretty big. I didn't know that. I'm not even gonna Google that. They're so they're, very cute, though. They are cute. They're they're so maybe that's. Cute. They think each other are cute. They're like, mm, what's up, girl? I don't know what's up with you. You got, got this chlamydia. <laughs> I got it too. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so India. Yes. How did you come up with your, I know, I know, I think I know most of the answer to this, but how did you come up with your pen name? Well, um, India is my middle name. Ray is a nickname, um, which is a derivative of my first name, Shere. So it just, it kind of worked for the urban world. And I chose the name because I I didn't go by my real name because I thought that at some point I might have to go back to corporate America because there was still some like, Mm -hmm. will this work out? But Four years later, um, only this ways up, yeah. And you, you actually did poetry for a time. What did you do your poetry under? Um, I did it under my Sheree Sh- name, my okay. Sheree name, um, my <laughs> first name. name. But now I've decided to just be everything under India Ray. So from yoga it's a great and poetry name. And it is a great, yeah, it's a really great name. And, and the spelling is different. Tell us how how it's spelled and how to find you on social media. You can find me at um, I am India Ray, and it's spelled N D I A R A E. Um, so I am India Ray on Instagram. It's the only social media that I really use. Uh, but she's also on Facebook. I am on Facebook. Author. Author in apostrophe D I A Ray R A E. And uh, if you're looking for the books, which you should be, <laughs> on Amazon, India Ray. Yeah, so we'll we'll say it again later in the show. But um, I wanted to say that Frankie, you have a creative brain similar to that. I do. Like you, yours is a little more fake focused. And I didn't say fake focused. I was focused. like, oh, that's fake our news. Fault. Fake news. <laughs> no, and I noticed her creative brain similar to yours. But when Frankie's doing jokes, like we talked about this today, she has this huge opportunity, and I'm super excited. She's going to go on and win Just for Last. <laughs> oh, no. no Out in okay. the universe. Let's put that in the universe. That's in the universe. <laughs> anyway, so Frankie has a way of mastering a joke by doing the joke in like 4,500 different variations. <laughs> And they're all fire. <laughs> but, like, I'm married to a certain one, and then she comes and just does another one and another one and another one, and it's like, I don't know how you do that. But I think it's amazing so, at the same time. So the way, the way that my, for me, the way that my brain works, and you get so, Nikki gets so angry with me. And, and I know that it's terrible practice. I know that it's bad, and I know that I shouldn't do it, but it's just the way that I work. And I'm trying to get out of it. Like I'm, I don't I'm say you shouldn't it. do it. Well, no, it's because I, I have never written, until last night, to be real honest, I have never written a joke pen to paper. Yeah. I've never written a joke down. I think of premises, mm-hmm. and I'll just go out and perform it until I get a joke out of it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, you know, Chappelle works like that, too. I just I just found that out not too long ago. 
<laughs> but he works like that too. And it's, it's just the way, even when I'm like, okay, I'm going to hunker down and I'm going to write. But interesting thing, you'll find this interesting. Do you remember a few months ago when we first, very first met? I mm-hmm. said, so, you know what? I've always had the desire to write a book. Mm-hmm. And I told you my, my book idea, right? Yeah, you're like, fantasy. ooh, yeah. right. You're like, ooh, you should do it. So I, I, I per- performing at Beer Baron one night, what, about a month ago? Mm-hmm. And I come off stage and this black woman comes up to me and she goes, she says, Frankie, uh, if you write a book, I will publish it. And she just, I just got my publishing packet. It's the Yay! publishing house in Santa. Congratulations. I so, but what I think this will do for me is help me to um, uh, become more disciplined mm-hmm. in writing. Mm-hmm. Do you get what I mean? So, sidebar, I need your help. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, I think it's time for us to take a break. Um, well, we, we got a minute or two. So, I want to I wanna ask you real quick. I want to play a game when we come back. Okay. We'll come back and do some uh, creative brain game stuff. Can, but, I, I want, can I be a contestant? Yes. Yes. No but I want to ask you about, as, as a millennial, mm-hmm. you know, entertainment and things like that mm-hmm. are completely different from what I'm used to. <laughs> and we recently discussed you going to a party where it's silent. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was like a silent was party. It was a silent, a disco? silent disco. Yeah. So... <laughs> Yeah, how it's a thing. Yeah. So Is you that get, you get headphones and you know they play music. Right. DJ plays music. It's not super loud. You can control the volume. You can remove one and talk to people. It's I feel like you know it's the ideal way to party these days. Yeah. Why? Because it's not super loud. You can hear and you know. Millennials are so it's a sil- out of touch. Silent discos have been around for a long time. Really? Yeah. Never Actually, what, yeah, yeah, yeah. Silent discos are pretty amazing. Why? I don't know. It's <laughs> just better. Like you're in control of. It's so weird. What you're yeah. doing? Yeah. What do you mean? You don't ever like, like go to a loud right club and, and party. And you're just like it's so loud. And I just want to tell my friend something really quick. Right. Or you want to kind yeah. of have a conversation, so, but you still want the. The music. idea of being there is to enjoy music. So everybody's listening to the same music, but different music. Same. So you listen to the same music, mm-hmm. just not in the air. Yeah. Right. So the music is in the air. Yeah. I got to do it. I have to so do it's, it. It's more I intimate. can't say it's yeah, stupid it is. Yeah, it's more until intimate. I discover Definitely. whether it's stupid or not. And but conceptually, like, to and me, And the older millennials, because I'm, I'm and, you know, us, because there's some of them. You're on the cusp. 20, yeah. No, I'm not. You're the middle. You're the cusp. At, at the I'm right at the beginning. So we like no, intimate not, settings. Not, we not like vibes. vibes. We like vibes. We it's like about the vibe. It has to yeah. be we like blurs. Yeah, we like aesthetics. We like it has to feel the energy right. that. Yeah. yeah so we're about, not doing yeah. massive clubs. We like smaller, more intimate settings. But y'all don't talk to each other. We do talk to each other. It's we do. We talk. Y'all text. We do text, but not like at a party. Right. We talk to each other. And you you never been at a party and just wanted to like interact with your friends. While you're at the club, uh, yeah, right. So in this in this capacity, you can because uh-huh. you can just pop your headphone yeah, on. Yeah. Like, hey, Nikki, you know, whatever, blah blah blah. And clubs are really really loud, so it's so just a, it's a really it's a okay. I'm just trying. It's to cute. Trust me, it's cute. It's, it's so cute. It sounds cute. Will you take me to one? I'll take you to one. I have to, I have to one. experience that because we'll go to the silent disco. Yeah, and you'll see that it's not stupid. Disco. It's super cat. I'm gonna be making noise though. I'm just gonna make noise. I'm gonna make oh noise God. at silent disco. You know what? And yeah, don't take her. Because <laughs> you won't you won't be able to go back. You're like, um, excuse me, ma'am. Yeah. We have you and your very large friend on the wall. <laughs> She's never oh we gotta we gotta pay some bills, y'all. She's never allowed back here. <laughs> Oh, sorry. We're gonna pay some bills. So we're gonna we're gonna take a quick break. This is Frankie French, Nikki Moore, and we have Endo Your Ray sitting in as our very special guest backstage. Beyond the last, we'll be back in just a second. Just a second. Yeah. Okay, this is fun. Notes, notes, no. Oh, good. Oh, your microphone is on. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to hear it. Arrangements. I didn't finish my sentence. Yes, Arrangements. Okay. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> I'm having so much fun. Like, this is good. You're a really good guest, by the way. Yay! I, I just want to try and remember some of the things that I want to talk about. I'm not going to tell you now because you ain't going to remember. Let's me. play the game. No, you just tell me. I can't. I remember. might remember. <laughs> 
said, you really terrible. can't remember the game? I want it. What yeah. was the game? You never Finish told? this joke. Oh, finish this joke. Yeah, finish this joke. I don't know. Okay. Finish this joke. I'm going to lose that one. You don't know jokes. I don't know jokes. Well, you don't have to get finish it. this. You don't have to get quotes. it right. Let's say finish this quote. Famous quotes. Oh. Okay. Or, or we that. can do the movie quotes like we used to do. Name this movie. But no, Name. millennial movies are different. I know some... No, I'm not. Yeah. Let's say finish this quote. Famous quotes. Finish this quote. Okay, that'll be fine. Famous quotes. You're an author. That should be easy for you. <laughs> Look at her eyes are like, mm. we'll see. I don't know. I'm we an author. Shall see. But I'll be reading. I'll read. Oh, God, that's the worst sentence I've ever heard in my life. Uh, I said I'm that. an awful. With an F. F. <laughs> awful. I'm an 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 awful. I'm Thank you. Well, that's very nice. To, and you know how good it feels to be included. It feels it feels good to be included. Ah, ooh, I'm sorry I said mention? what I said. You about did. Shoot, I'm sorry. Okay, are you mad at me? Are you disappointed? In say me? what you said. What? I said I'm sorry. I said what I said about the arrangements. She didn't hear. Did you hear? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes, she did. What did it? Was it recorded? <laughs> no. Please say it wasn't. She's gonna cut it by you, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we have to be mindful. We are, you're absolutely right. Because never we represent the mayor of our great city. And we don't want to miss. But although she's totally into that. Oh, okay. Good. She, so, you, you're fine. so you're picking up what I'm putting down. Wink, wink. <laughs> Somebody and a nudge, nudge. Okay. Did you say and a nudge, nudge? Though? Yeah. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Okay. All right. Oh, my God. Come on, Andy, right? I read oh, that. I had a, an idea for a silent comedy show. I'll tell you about it later. It's so dope. Okay. It's incredible. Oh, oh shit. I said it on I think we are. Yep. Mm. Okay. Come on. Come on. Oh, okay. Well, back. It's Nikki Moore, along with Frankie French and hey. today's guests. In the array. array. The amazing author, poet, singer. And all around entertaining. I'm so impressed with the volume of books you've written. Yeah. That's exhaust. You know what I mean? That sounds, that's amazing. So what's the breakdown for me? What's the time frame? You know what I mean? From book one to book 47. Um, the very first book was published in 2013. Um, and it was actually part of a challenge, like a 30-day challenge. Can we write a book in 30 days? <laughs> And wow. I wrote it. It was horrible. It is the worst thing I've ever written. No. Like 14 people bought it. I refused to unpublish it, though. <laughs> but it is horrible. And I, unpublish I'm it. I'm never going to unpublish it. That's so um, funny. Shows the ring. And I, uh, <laughs> I know, right? I, um, yeah. So then after that, I took a break. And then I, I was teaching yoga full time at that point. And so I wrote um, a couple of books based on yoga, some yoga books. And I did that as just a way to supplement my yoga teaching income. And then okay. someone told me, like, you really, really should get into romance. So let me ask you this. How many career endeavors did you have? Because you have a very interesting story that involved an air mattress in a basement. <laughs> How what? many endeavors did you have? I'd like for you to tell our listeners. You kind of have to. You can't say story. air mattress in a basement. Now, yeah. it's like, is there a victim involved? You know, no victim. Time. She was a victim. I was a victim. Her career. So wow. Wait, what? You have to just like go to the bottom. And you just got to sleep on an air mattress out of a box from Walmart on a basement floor. Was it blown up? It was it was a mattress. Okay. It wasn't an air mattress. It was a mattress that came rolled up oh, in a box. Oh, it was an air mattress. It was mattress in a box. without the air. How how thick was it? What type of inches are we talking about? It was probably like gel it was, mattress. No. It was it so was, that's not a mattress. It was so that's comfortable. A mat. No, it was comfortable. Was it gel though. mattress? It was thick memory or foam. Yoga and it was, wood thick. No, it was like it was a mattress. You know when it and it, when it sprung when it cut out of the box. Okay. And you unrolled it. You know, it's some real like, fierce mattresses in the box. It pushed up a little bit. Yeah. One of my so, favorite things was, is the mattress in the box now. Mattresses in the box is a thing. And my cousin, who's also named India, who I was named for, she was so gracious to allow me to, you know, sleep in her basement. In her basement. Um, and I moved in, rolled out my mattress, and I slept there. And I was in grind mode. I would go to work. I would go to the gym at like 5 a.m., take a shower at the gym, go to work. As soon as I got off from work, go sit at Starbucks and write. And I did that, and that, that's when I transitioned. 
But um, no, no, I was just I was the only victim involved in the, <laughs> That's the a mattress, good story, though. The basement mattress. That's so, how many endeavors before you landed with author enduring? Um, like so, it was nonprofit right out of college, then uh, property management, then yoga. Reiki, nutrition, and I lived the holistic hippie, crunchy life. Um, which with or without deodorant? How with are, deodorant. Okay, Listen, okay. there are two yeah, things that I'm never bread. gonna. No matter how natural, my eyebrows will get waxed. And I'm wearing deodorant. Girl, and, yes. Like, I'm say not. that. <laughs> how long were you a vegan? That uh, vegetarian for ten years and vegan off and on throughout that time. Um, and then I had a cra- while living in Baltimore and sleeping on the basement floor. I had a craving for a lamb burger and that's mm. what it ended it all how did you even know to crave lamb? i don't know i think it's in my dna whatever I lamb burger now. whatever uh region in lamb. africa i'm from they probably ate a lot of lamb okay. and it was just in my dna I you do look a little ethiopianist i don't, I don't know you yeah, have kind of a lauren hill bot sit happening right a little lauren hillish mm. i don't get lauren i get you don't see it a shaka that's, no. Either way, the lamb. No, that's the I love pronouncing Nubian lamb. Tap Egyptian. Okay. I get that. We can go Nubia. Nubia. But yeah, I um, okay. I did. I lived all of that, and I was teaching yoga full time, and I was all over the place, and it was cool. But I, I like money. <laughs> I really like money. Yoga. You, you were gonna be uh, yoga, yoga. I can't even say yogurt. Yoga? I was gonna do I was gonna become yogurt. You're gonna be a yogurt instructor. What's a yogurt instructor? A that? yoga instructor. Uh-huh. You had a yoga studio, right? No, I never I never had I a studio. I thought you did. Mm-hmm. Okay. I never had a studio. Okay. Um maybe one day. Nope. I'll retire. The yoga is vicious because she only knows one speed. Okay, there's no beginner with this girl. Oh, no. And she has a beginner's class, but it's completely and absolutely intermediate. Have you tried it? I tried it. How did you come, keep coming back? And she kept on chimichanga in. Chaturanga. So are you, it made me hungry. Are you te- are you teaching yoga currently? Yes, I teach oh. at Divas and Dolls in uh, Temple Hills on Monday nights. So it's my only class right now, and um, it's it was my way back into yoga because after being poor <laughs> and sleeping on the mattress, Yo. I said I need to put all my efforts Yo. into making money and taking care of myself. And now that I'm Happy where I am. I can teach. Good for you. That's amazing. It is. That. That's it a really good testimony. Temporary. Is there someone I'm sure needs to hear it? Somebody that's sleeping on an air mattress in a basement, or just a mat on the side of you know the road. That's that's <laughs> what I was gonna say. Then I realized how stupid that sounded. It but it could be. It could be. It's, well, it's a possibility. Here's my thing. Are they really watching live if they're sleeping on the side of the road? Who's or, their, <laughs> what service are they using? That's my question. Poor people don't have phones. Yes, they do. I know. Government. They, government. Oh, but can they go live? Oh, anyway, but it's a good test. I don't know, Mark. I appreciate it. Could you go live on your Obama phone? You're a monster. <laughs> you are. Mark is a friend of ours. Well, I love Mark Carter. We gotta have Mark. Carter Mark is on like the my show. brother. Oh my god! I think we have to have Mark Carter on the show next week. Yes. We should call Mark Carter and prank call him and have him on the show like yeah, live. We should. Can we do I that? I think we should do that. We can't do it right now. Okay, we gotta yeah. plan that. Jess, can we prank call somebody? <laughs> Jess is our amazing, fantastic she said no. Talk, Jess. Can we hear you if you talk? Okay. Say hi. <laughs> I never know what they're going to say. Say hi. Yeah, you do. And it's Mark. And Mark would say something. Right. Exactly. Extremely. And get us kicked off the air. Extremely. 100%. All right, Jess. Thank you, Jess. Voice of reason. You're amazing human. <laughs> okay, so we're talking to author, India Ray. actress, comedian. No, no, no. <laughs> author, actress, singer, and poet. In and yoga right. instructor. And yoga instructor. I'll do a little bit of everything. A little bit of everything. And you do know a little bit about a lot of stuff. I do. That's that. So that's recently that's we have that's dubbed that's her, actually Lester dubbed her, the fairy. Because she's so holistic and grounded and earthy that mm-hmm. she knows about channeling the universe. Yeah. And so we decided recently, we, we ran back into each other and reacquainted over um, um, TM. Mm-hmm. Right. Actually, I reached out to you when Robert died. To right, pay condolences. Did. And then we found out we all TM'd mm-hmm. and all of that stuff. And it was like, oh my God. I'm trying to slide in y'all's TMs. 
<laughs> you should. It's everything. I, I heard. Um, Tell them what TM is. Tr- TM transcendental is. meditation. Yeah. Yeah. Remember, I gave you the book. Did you read it? I did. I have I it. Book. Yeah, I have oh, it. It's, by, it's by my bed. Yeah, I have not read it yet. Okay, you should read it. I will. Thank you for reminding me I have that. Yes, yeah, you should read it. But I, I heard that Jer- Jerry Seinfeld said like his whole life changed mm-hmm. he did. once he started doing TM. Yeah, he did. And you know what he said? He said he only did the PM TMs because he didn't do the AM TMs because it's 20 minutes twice a day. You wake up, you, you do your thing, you, you get up, you brush your teeth, you do whatever you do, and then you meditate. So he said, so TM is like a form of oh, okay. deep rest. It's mm-hmm. So, so t- the idea. Yeah, that energy in there is really good. Okay, I'm not sure what's happening. From, you hit, yeah, like sure, sure, more. sure. He, TM is the a form of deep rest, and the idea of waking up and resting was a little more than he could wrap his mind around. Yeah. So he only did the evening TMs. Oh, okay. So he said, sense. "Imagine how much more he would have accomplished had he, he was yeah. a uh, executive producer for the number one hit show of many decades, almost mm-hmm. on Seinfeld. NBC." He was a stand-up comedian, actor, author, husband, father, and all that stuff, and successful beyond measure. And he only did the one. Right. Imagine what he would have accomplished. If he had done both. Oh my goodness. I know. I know. But doing both with creative brain is a challenge. It is a challenge. Because I'm a morning that. person, so I can do things. I do things early in the morning, so I always can get that AM meditation. But it's the PM one because, like, once the day gets going and my mind gets going, it's it's. I can see me being. It is. It's hard. Whenever I have something to do, I want. I'm like, let's do it early, like Mm -hmm. earlier. Like, how early are you up? Because I'm up at five. When do you want to meet? You know what I mean. This one is crazy with that though. She is. I'll be at your house at like seven fifteen. Yeah, morning, 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 morning. You should be a morning person. I am a morning person. It's because I'm old. (laughs) <laughs> and I think as you age, you lose the ability to sleep or run out of sleep. So you just, you know, are up and doing stuff. So here's what I will say, now. TM has created in me the ability to harness my focus mm-hmm. and, you know, just push myself to experience different levels of the things that I aspire you know, one of which is this show. It's one of my aspirations. So, that's a good thing. Also, there are many famous, successful people who practice TM. Russell Simmons. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Howard Stern. Mm-hmm. Oprah Winfrey. Mm-hmm. Pop Chopra. Mm-hmm. I mean, the list goes on. So, I, Super I live for it. And I, and, and I strive to perfect it. And the beautiful thing is we can always get reattuned. And Start over. Yeah. 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 So, oh, I amazing. encourage anybody out there to get into it. And it, Those TM are my two is a bags. practice. Yeah, it yeah, is a That practice. has helped children. Yeah. Children with ADD. Children, adults with ADD. <laughs> adults, with, adults with ADD. I need to turn the sound off. Um, adults with ADD. <laughs> Oh, that's why you keep saying Yeah. I got it now. So anyway, I'm on the same page. What we do. What we do is we we strive to become better, do better, and all that stuff. So enough about that. Indy Ray. Yes. If not books, what? I would probably be trying to figure out how to... It would be still be something creative. It, it would be music, which it is music, too. And, um, Where can we hear your music? <laughs> so you haven't produced any that's out yet. We're working on it. Okay. We're, working on it. We're writing it. Um, okay. If it wasn't, if it wasn't books, it would, it would still be something entrepreneurial, um, and it would still be something creative. And I'm not exactly sure what, but um, I, I'm a hustler, and I'm gonna find a way to make money. Mm-hmm. So support black business. Yeah, I'm gonna find a way. Um, but. Eventually, you know, I want the tea house yoga studio. Oh, I love it. When I'm like, sit back. I'm ready to be a sage. Today, track. <laughs> sage wise 
grandmother. Oh, okay. Take it. Come drink my tea. <laughs> no, no, see, no, that terrified me just now. I don't want your weird magical tea. Yes, you do. You definitely. Want like I feel like I do, but like then I feel tea. like you now I live. With, have to live with you oh, forever. Tea, you know what I mean? And not because you're making me. But because now I can't leave. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's what you're, you're drawing in. And that's how my ex feels. I'm just so. so let me ask you this: since we are backstage beyond the last, so who's your favorite comedian? My favorite comedian. Parents. What? Oh my god, Ariana! It's a little favorite. embarrassing. Eddie Murphy. Eddie oh, Murphy. good pick. Okay. Good pick. Okay. What's What's your favorite Eddie Murphy joke? My favorite Eddie Murphy joke is the cookout joke. Um, okay. And Finish the Aunt this. Bunny. Finish this live. Let her finish. No, because then she might tell the joke. Oh, okay. I want her to finish this joke. Okay. Right. Give her the Aunt Bunny joke and, and stop somewhere it. where she's... You don't know it? Not, not, uh, sorry, not You're by heart. You're a comedian and you don't know the Aunt Bunny joke? Not by heart. No. She fought on the stairs and she not. works to step Oh, Lord, down. help me, help me, Jesus, Lord, help me, Jesus, Lord, help me, Jesus. <laughs> Yeah, I know the joke, but I don't know the whole, I can't just tell the whole the joke. Bit. No, I don't know the bit. You no. don't know enough to, you could have did that, finish the line, as, oh, Lord, help me, Jesus. That could have been finish the joke. You know what, I'm going to finish your joke. And I'm there's so much, there's so much in that. How about, that how about, joke. don't worry about blank, roll blank around. Oh, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about the room. Oh, get that uh, light up, full up, full light out here. <laughs> that's right, that's right. We're not Listen. cooking brontosaurus burgers in this. M- yeah. Homage to Charlie Murphy, the the uh, very funny and uh, super sweet. Recipe. Who's in one of my favorite movies of all time? Which, Which one? CB4. I don't know how my mother let that one slip through the cracks. <laughs> child, I don't know that movie. I never watched. You never. It. It's, it's Chris Rock's best movie. CB4. CB4. Is oh, now. and um, with um, the ch- the Fushnikins were in it. Fushnikins? Yeah, the Fushnikins were in that movie. I don't what know is the it about? Oh. But it's a, a rap it's a spoof of NWA. Why do you know a rap group called the Fushnikins? I've never remembered that. Are they, Jewish? Never remembered. Are no, they like an Orthodox it's Jewish a, it's a, so rap group? No. When I was a teenager, I won a, um, a trip to Florida off the radio. I probably shouldn't tell this story. Why? <laughs> tell it. <laughs> Any, if you shouldn't it tell it, it doesn't end well for it. them. Well, who? For them. For I the Fushnikins? No. They were, they were, this not, they were of age. <laughs> and I, we, me and my sister were not of age. And we won a trip to Florida. Well, that sounds like your life, Frankie. <laughs> you were 12 years old living with a grown man. I, yes, I, that was Not in a, a, a good way. No. Go, go no. on. Tell the story. So, I mean, well, so we went to Florida. We were not supposed to, like, we had no, we, we had no ID, nothing. We were kid, we were children, like 13, 14. Like, we were not supposed to go. And we won it off of the, one of the DC radio stations. <laughs> oh, don't say, don't say the station. I, I would don't never, I would never. Not, I would the Foose Niggas. I would never. And we, so we go to Florida and we're sitting by the pool chilling and they're there. So the food is the food I've never heard of this. And I've seen this you remember, a I am a true, times. What I am a true food schnick. You don't remember that song? No, so sit, ooh, sorry. sit, how many, how will there, ooh, never No. <laughs> anyway, so, so I'm like, oh, we're talking about You them. remember that song, Jess? You don't remember the food schnick? Wait, wait, when the producer doesn't remember the song. Oh my god. The radio station producer you guys, does not remember the food schnick. Like does anybody the out there in our live wait, remember Were they, were the food they an Orthodox Jew rap group? No, That's it was, all it was I three. Black, there, were three, if there were three black guys. The Fushnik. Oh, and so do you remember when Shaq did his like rap debut? He was with the Fushnikins. Okay. Yeah. No. So okay. yeah. So okay. that's a landmark and that's, that didn't help any of us. <laughs> well, that's why they were there in Miami because they were recording with Shaq. Is when he worked when he played for the Heat. Nice. Okay. okay. So anyway, so we Mystery, met them. Geography. Long story so short, nice. we met them and we hung out with them. Okay, the Fushnik. But the funny thing is, I recognized one of them as the, the, the light skinned dude. I was like, I You him, recognized a Fushnik? <laughs> <laughs> what, like at the airport? No, no. Hey, you're a Fushnik. <laughs> no, you were the only one. I was. So, wait a minute, I said to my sister, I said, You know what? I said, The light skinned dude looks like the light skinned guy from, from the Fushnikins. And my sister's like, Oh, he does. And he got mad because he thought I was being funny. He thought I knew who he was, and I was, and, but I really didn't. Wait, he got mad. He got upset and like left and like <gasps> didn't like. Yeah, he got upset. What the foosh niggin? Wait, right, what in the foosh niggins? <laughs> anyway, so that's a dumb long tangent. I'm sorry. It was good though. It was, it was ridiculous. It was quite entertaining. Yeah. 
I, I, I now that, need to I'm know about gonna, the food thing. I don't want to fall down like a I'm gonna have my millennials. 80s, 90s rabbit hole. Of it was about to, rappers. Yeah, it was. They I are, need to have my millennial. I, I'm gonna look this up. I do not remember them in this movie, and I've seen CD4 a thousand times yeah, since I was a kid, and, and you don't recall. I do not snakes. remember the food. Perhaps snakes. you saw them and didn't know they were the food snakes, because quite possibly because I remember Easy E being in the movie. I remember Ice T being in the movie. I remember Easy E was in the movie. Easy E was in the movie. It's really it's that old. Wow, it's that old. Okay, like okay. Chris Rock's first movie ever, and it's hilarious. Okay, and if you haven't seen it, we should watch it. So Pookie wasn't his first role. Okay, so that maybe may have been his first role. I think CB4 may have came, come out after that, okay. but it, that was, I think he wrote this movie. And That's a little uh, factoid that we, we kind of. That was the Fushnikins. Look at that. And there's the light skinned guy who looks sort of like um, <laughs> Wonder Mike <laughs> from. What's the rap group? Um, what's the rap group, Wonder Mike? I can't remember. I am Wonder Mike, and I like to say hello. To the black, to the black, to the red, the brown, and the purple and yellow. But first, I gotta. I don't know. This is before my time. Bang bang, the boogie, the boogie, the up, jump, the boogie, to the bang bang, boogie. Say it, bro. bro. There's always um, you get to see some of my characters devolve mentally. Um, so that's the goal, and to write for film and television. Yes. Will you write? Would you write my biopic? Okay. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. Okay. That's okay. I mean, the Sushnikin story at 12, 13 oh, years old. Oh, that's not even that's the interesting nothing. stuff. Uh, yeah. That is nothing. That's a nothing thing. This one has a story, baby. Oh, yeah, you love it. Nothing. It's right up there with Ratchet novel. Oh, uh, yeah. It's drama. Like, yeah, it takes Ratchet. It makes 12 years of crack whore look like nothing. <laughs> uh, Bible story. <laughs> okay. <Yeah>. Sushnikin. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, what, what are you working on right now? Right now, I am writing uh, this Becky keeps touching my hair. Oh my god! <laughs> and that really is a psychological thriller. It's okay. definitely it's based on okay. true events. That's <laughs> so close. My favorite thing right uh, now. I'm writing Ratchet Wives uh, Club, Atlanta Three, okay. and I'm writing your granddaddy, my sugar daddy. So I'm writing three books at once right now. Wow! Right. What kind of uh, creative and, brain is that? Oh. It's the only way it's gonna work. Good like, God! When I get stressed out with one story, I can't. I don't want to do that. Stop it! Let me just go to the else. next. So like they're all in varying stages of uh, being finished. Good. Yeah. But uh, the goal is to in between March and April. These are that's what's on the roster. To come How do you out. turn it off and like switch gears like that? Like if you are deeply entrenched in the Becky keeps touching my hair and. You know, you get to a place where you stop. How do you just go from that? I don't. It's the, it's always in the back. Right. You're like, there's going a, like all the, the tabs are always open. Really? Yeah, all I the tabs that. are always open. So you're kind of just like, all right, I'm just going to go to the next one. And, Is and it maybe like something will stimulate and I can go back and like, oh, I should put this in there. So it's, it really, I'm writing, being a creative in, in this aspect, it works perfectly okay. because I can bounce from tree to tree and have my monkey mind. That's what we call it in yoga, monkey the monkey mind. mind. Okay. Um, it can go wild and I, you know, and I have all my bills on auto pay, so I, I throw them away. Okay. <laughs> I throw them away. That's your standard. You like, that's you, that. right. that's, that's you know, what you do. I'm really <laughs> bad at the administrative stuff. I'm, I, I am, but, you know. Go do, ahead, do you have an assistant? One day we're working yeah. on it. This summer, I'm a I'm a get an assistant. I need a fly, organized type A, and I need it to be slightly mean to me. Like be like, I need to be like, I need it to be rude and like you need to get you. I need to like judge me too. Like you're so trifling. Like, your, I need somebody to get in my car and be like, this is disgusting. I love it. I need it. that. Okay, I, I respect that. that. When Look, you're I'm taking. I can't take this job, <laughs> but I'm happy to come in and do all of the psychological trauma stuff. I need that. that. You need. I, people I'm, are so I'm here nice for you. to me, and it's because I have a nice Not face. Me. But people are nice to I'm me, and I'm like, I need you to be a little meaner to me. Right? Because, judge me. You judge know, me. judge me a little bit. A little okay? bit. Yeah. Just a little bit. I guess. Okay, that. I'm here for you. When you're bouncing book to book like how you are right now, is it like you trans, um, you uh, what is the word I'm looking for? 
Really? When yes, you, I know, the word went out of my brain. But it's like you're you transported. Trans- That's the word. Oh, okay. Is it like you're transported? Is it like you're transported to each of these different worlds? Is yes. How, yeah, okay, because yeah. that's how I see it in my brain. Yeah, it's, it's definitely like, yeah. like alternative realities because right. that's, that's yeah. got to be an interesting existence, though. It's, yeah. and only like some today, of my books. I get to be in a club at the Right, party, yes. yeah. And then, and then I go from that to but it's, church. And it's like you're it's like you're really there, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I visualize it. I can 100% it. understand I, that. I, I don't, she didn't tell this story about my childhood. I talked to myself a lot. And out loud, do you not remember this? Out loud, yes. Oh, my loud. okay. Bella. I'm the only child. We, we didn't talk about that. Oh my God. <laughs> I don't mind, I don't care. I tell people now, I talk to my I still do it. I talk to Bella myself. does that, and yeah. I was, I was been so worried. My mother no. was too, yeah. But my I leave her alone now. I don't say anything to her about it unless, like, if I'm doing something, that's because she's an only child. She was an only child too. Oh, is that yeah, what that yeah, is? Yeah, yeah. Oh, some, but sometimes I'm like, if I'm doing something, I have to say, I'm like, Bella, like, I need you to use your inside mind because. I can't focus because she'll, you know, really be into the conversation. Like, <laughs> girl. I'm like, see, I'm a little embarrassed to do it, so I'll kind of be in a room with oh, my friends, my imagination. Was, uh, and see, her mother had seven, it was seven of them, right? It was six, seven, six. six of them. And um, That's this funny. one only my mom had has one six. child. Yeah. I mean, she's the only one. So I guess that goes, you know, like, you got to entertain yourself as a kid. And she still does it, though. Oh. So I'm, I'm nervous about that part. No, I don't. I know. No, I, don't I feel do it much people. better about Bella now. I, listen, sometimes you just gotta get this stuff out of your mouth. Right. I'll be in the car. I have concerts. I have interviews. I've done this. Interview okay. Well, I, <laughs> do, you ever, do you ever accept awards? Oh, do I? Yes, give you a <laughs> oh boy, I haven't done that in a while. Like, I already have my award. Yeah, I yes. Awards. Let me hear. Let me I hear your concerts. acceptance speech, Frankie. First, I just want to say. <laughs> None of this would be possible without God. I just want to say that first. I want to say I did all this for for my grandmother, Celestine Eleanor Lowe. She raised me. I love you. R.I.P. Your angel on my heart. I want to thank my team, Nikki Moore, India Ray, Jess. I, I mean, I, everyone I didn't name. I know I missed some people. I apologize. I love you. And let's talk about the issues right now. Let's talk about some now. <laughs> I was getting ready to stop the music. Cue the music. Okay, India Ray. Accept the speech. You got turned. Girl, that's oh, probably yeah, my favorite yeah. acceptance that's, speech. Yeah, Mine's right, gonna be like thirty right. minutes. My uh, yeah, no, you I'm a, you gonna give me my time. I'm not done yet. You gonna give me all my time. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. That's so, so funny. We gotta wrap, but before we do, tell our listeners how to find you once again. You can find me on Amazon. Um, Who are you? I am India Ray, and that's spelled in apostrophe D I A, last name R A E. And I'm on Instagram. I at um, I am India Ray, no apostrophe. Um, also on Facebook, author in apostrophe D I A Ray. And you can find all the titles and IndiaRay.com. That's my website. Uh, forgot to and you can also the find her at a silent disco. Find me at a silent disco. <laughs> a coffee, a really Hilarious. cute coffee shop. Mm-hmm. Okay, Whole Foods. Whole Foods, definitely. Any? A yoga studio. Not at the mall. <laughs> I hate shopping. Can I just say, is she a girl? I <laughs> hate shopping. I where, love shopping. Where do they so grow hard. people like you? Hate it. I don't have the attention span. Oh my it. God. Or the patience. Live to shop. I love it. If, you know, if, if nothing else that stuff. I do in life ever. You have to always be re- able to relieves shop. Relieves me or takes mm-hmm. me to that zen place. Shopping. I can I can I can get on board with that. Oh my gosh! Sun up to sundown. I could shop from the time the stores open to the time they close. I could be in the now. Place. I have an expiration date. Be t- I still wouldn't be tired. Thank you. I have an expiration date. I can like touch it. every like article clear on every rack. And most stores are just like cluttered, cluttered, yeah. cluttered. And then there's people, and that's clutter. And I'm like, I. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, see, I like to... mm-hmm. Oh God, I can't. the website and you know. Well, I that I, I love that too. Now I will online shop to yeah, death. I do that. But I also, when I do go out and shop, I like to go early, early morning, and then like when they open, I'm in, and it's kind of like it's my store because it's just me and usually the workers, and then I'm just in there, and then when people start trickling, and then I'm out. So you know where to find me, everybody. Frankie French, F R A N Q I. Um, March 16th, if you're in New York, I will be on the Bad B Festival. Okay. Um, performing in Funny Honeys. I'll be headlining, so come out and check that out. Can I say, follow me. I'm Nikki, N-I-K-I Moore, M-O-O-R-E, funny. 
on Instagram and uh, Nikki Moore on Facebook. And this, uh, we have some exciting stuff coming up in comedy in, in D.C. Mm-hmm. Next month would be April. Hopefully, uh, we, we don't date this by doing that. But the D.C. Comedy Festival, which is an annual festival, is in its second year in D.C., popping up. And uh, we had an amazing time at the newest open mic comedy uh, at venue in D.C. at Smith's, the Smith Law, Commons. Comedy and the Law. Smith Commons. On the third floor, and it was fire. It was incredible. Dude, the energy. running. Yeah, the energy is amazing. Oh, my God. This thing is so good. So if you're a comedian and you're out there in the universe and you're just looking, you're happening into D.C., if it's a Monday night, 8 to, eight, eight to whenever, we're going to be up in love. Yeah, and if you want to come perform, Carrie Kennison is who you want to contact. And her email is C-A-R-I dot K-E-N-I-S-T-O-N. Slang and jokes. At gmail.com. Because that's what probably we give you that too. And some people sling other stuff. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for listening. <laughs> good job. We've been here with Indy Array. Thank you for uh, having Frankie me. French. And I'm Nikki Moore. And this has been Backstage Beyond, Beyond the Last. We right here every every Saturday. At midnight. Yes, right after the Oxygen Mix. Right here on DC Radio. Tune in. That was fun. That was that good. That was cute. We get good. good. We get gooder. Good. We get gooder, Jess. We get gooder. It's dinner time. And um uh, and yeah, can you pass me this little yeah, Frankie. Do all the Frankie. Thank you. Me and the knuckles. We got good chemistry, me and knuckles right there. Yeah, that's we're... knuckles. That's Frankie hey. Knuckles. Um I that's looked adorable India, right? last night. I know every time y'all see me I'm in has, but I looked adorable last night. I just I did look cute last night. I didn't look cute last night, Nikki. I didn't look cute last night. You look cute right up until the time you told that cute boy that okay, you hated him. Okay, first off, he wasn't cute, and he walked like he had a... He was ugly cute, and that's cute to no, me. No, he was not ugly cute. That's and, cute in and my he universe. he was disrespectful to women. He was not disrespectful. Yeah, he, he, said, he said, I hope you funny. No, that, okay. that's all he said. No, that's, that's all he that's said. That's a very I said, light you know what? Version. <laughs> what was don't even worry he about was it, bro. nobody and a nothing. I was funny. And, and, and see, what she don't know is he came right over to me afterwards Ugh. and said, you were funny. <laughs> and what you don't did. know is... He was consistent. What is wrong with her? He's, Why is she hating on that man? Because he was not a He was man. beautiful and ugly cute. He no, was he so was not. Cute. He was unattractive and he was ass. Who oh, my this? God. Are we eating? This boy? Yeah, let's go eat. I'm what hungry. Are we going to eat? What, what is this? this? I had an earring. I'm Did hungry. I have an earring? I'm not kind of hungry. It's like an appetizer. <laughs> the <laughs> earring. Where's my yeah, earring? I need to go shopping, Sheree. Why do you want to shop with somebody that don't like shopping? I don't know. It's bad. It's like going shopping with a man. <laughs> I'm not that bad. I think that's your testosterone. You ready, Nikki? Let's go. Look, she rushing me. Evelyn been calling you. She it's has. Over. It's like she called you like three times. Well, I'm working. I'm busy. Oh, answer. We off now. Let's see what Evelyn wants. She's so aggressive. Evelyn. <laughs> what? You heard what I said? The people on the show, I said, let's see what Evelyn was. She's so aggressive. <laughs> Y'all, this Evelyn, this is my crazy, this is my crazy assistant. I don't know why she's calling me. What do you want, Evelyn? We at the radio. You see, I'm at the radio station. Why were you calling while I'm on the air? If you knew I was on the air. Huh? Oh, I got back on Huh? You what? Yeah, we were late today. Yeah, we were late today. Yeah. So we, okay, I'm getting off the air now because we're not doing nothing. I'm finished. Yeah, we got to take. 